I'm glad it's, I'm glad that race is finished. Uh, shows we're all human, I suppose. We uh, we won two and lost one, I suppose. Bug of a one to lose. <laughs> They seem to us invincible. The style and performance that already made their mark. Their medal was to be for us as well as them. The perfect end to the perfect story. It was a story that was to begin in athletic rags and end with athletic riches. On the world rowing scene, New Zealand was little more than a backwater. None of Oxbridge's courtly traditions here. Our rowing strength was built firmly around the grassroots dedication of the clubs. That dedication had taken New Zealand rowing from obscurity and placed it firmly centre stage. They'd taken on the world's best and won. So the story would celebrate a victory for one of the last outposts of amateurism. Even at club level, a call on time and effort is demanding. Training is often six days a week. There's little, if any, place for social rowing. Standards are kept high by rowing only to race. There's no need for anyone to look out of the boat. It's total concentration and dedication from here on in. Our total training has been based around this one race. Okay, this is the one, the one that we want. Just think about it on the way up to the start. Suck that air in. Get that running through your blood, that air, that extra air, which we're going to need. Push off. Good luck. I don't forget, you know. Tap, tap. Okay, you know. Good on you, love. Okay, back it down, whole crew. Can You'll be right. Move away before that wind blows you over. No matter what the level, there is every opportunity to race. And in New Zealand, they race more than anywhere else in the world. Of course it was no accident that we had eyes only for the eight. For 20 years, they'd been the spearhead of the nation's assault on world rowing. From fierce club rivalry, New Zealand had produced an eight which had taken the past two world championships with ease. So the story would also be about the best rowers in the world. The life of would-be champions is the life of those all too familiar with the nature of pain. Five and a half minutes, no! Wired like laboratory animals, 32. the top rowers in this country must undergo one of the most demanding trials asked of any sportsman. For six minutes, the duration of a 2,000 metre race, they pit themselves against the machine which measures their capacity for work.
literally go from a state of rest, apart from maybe a bit of apprehension, to a state of total exhaustion and near unconsciousness. Uh, 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 35! Uh, uh, first three or four minutes, I think it's probably true to say that the, the body can cope in a state of equilibrium, but it's probably the last 25% that the crunch comes. Five, fifty, five, four, three, two, one, stop. <laughs> experienced oarsmen will say in the last part of the race that they go through a barrier of pain and they have tunnel vision, they're not seeing so well. It's probably just as well, otherwise they may not be able to finish. Uh, <coughs> Sitting up. Are you ready? Rope! Of the country's two and a half thousand rowers, only 29 are called to trials. Most have made it here by virtue of their winning form at the national champs. But some, like Barry Mabbott, are here to prove that a loss in form at the nationals was a passing aberration. Last year, as a member of the New Zealand Eight, he'd won gold at the world champs. It seemed then that he could look with confidence to repeating that effort at the Los Angeles Olympics. Instead, he was now faced with a do-or-die effort just to hang on to his place in the crew. Five, five, four, three, two, one, stop! Forty. Fred Strawn, the selector for over 20 years, knew the signs only too well. Rowers battling to hold themselves together while the body continued its slide toward total exhaustion. <laughs> 